way things are going here right now, but the winner of this will face Tony Pedragon in the semifinals. And this is a good matchup right here. John Force knows that Kenny Bernstein's one of the best levers in the business. And I guarantee you he's looking at it because he has in his past races with Kenny. And Kenny in the first round was about careful, 500 guys. of a second quicker in reaction time than John. So John knows he's got to dig deep, but he doesn't want to make a mis the mistake. He's already had a couple red lights this year. Doesn't need another one, but he can't let Kenny get too much of a jump on him because he's, you know, he's Kenny Bernstein. Kenny Bernstein, his first ever NHRA race was in Dallas, not at this track, but in Dallas 37 years ago. He's still kicking butt. The one thing, though, if John Force is, you know, is watching everything, cars are really having a hard time getting down that right-hand lane. So it's one of those situations. Don't push it too hard. Don't be late, but don't push it too hard. Well, John was a little late. And John oh, goes. There's a problem with his car. He comes across. He hit Bernstein. Both cars continue on. John's car is torn well up. Wow, that was just a big crash. That's frightening. You saw John Force's car comes down here with just the motor, and there is where the seat is, back in behind the wheels. Safety crew is there. His wife watches on from the start line. They're trying to get that car around to where they can get to John and hopefully get him out of that car. Well, those cars are made to break apart at a hard impact right at the motor plate where it did, but still, uh, that's a hard impact. Something happened in John's car it went away, broke, came over into the other lane. Then the two cars got together. The broken front end of John's car continued all the way down the track, bouncing against the wall. And this part stopped right here. This is frightening. Yeah, you hate to see that. I mean, especially all that damage. Uh, God, all we can hope is that John's okay. You know, the one thing I don't see, Mike, is uh, I don't see a lot of real concern from the medical types who are right there. It seems to be more a concern of how you get them out of the car. Ashley Forrest has just arrived on the scene. We can see Kenny's car drifting toward the center line, fighting it, fighting it. The crowd continues to watch. Lori watches from the start line. Ashley got in a golf cart right away and came down here. Of course, there are some crew members there as well who uh, know the car better, of course, than anybody. They can maybe trying to get the belts off of John to... Uh, Get him out of the, to get him out of the uh, car. And the word did just go out to fire up the emergency evacuation helicopter, but still we have no indication at all as to John Force's condition. He is still strapped into the seat, into underneath the roll hoop of that car, which broke away from the front end and the engine. Ashley is staying over here on the golf cart. Now she starts moving over toward the wall. But he's being a little protective of her. Like you say, Mike, uh, part of the design is to get it to break, get rid of some of that energy. So in this case, that's what we hope has happened. He is. I mean, and the other thing is, though, I mean, it, it was a hard enough impact to break it. So, I mean, that's that's a scary thing in itself because even though, like you say, on a hard impact, they're supposed to break away, let the engine go one way, still, I mean, it's still got to be a pretty hard impact to do that. Think of the, think of the things that have happened to this team this year. The death in Florida of uh, Eric Medlin. Now this appears to be a very serious accident. Gary Gerald. 
Oh, we just talked with Dan Brickey, who is the medical uh, director for NHRA. He is on the phone there, firing up the helicopter. He said John is conscious. He has injuries to his lower extremities. They will fly him to a nearby hospital for further emergency treatment. You saw John Medlin. You can imagine how his heart is beating. Conscious injuries to lower extremity. Dan Brickey is now talking to Ashley. That's Dan with the sunglasses on on the left. He directs the medical operations. Giving her the rundown is the family representative right here on the scene. Everybody else uh, stayed up at the line. You saw Robert Hyde standing alongside of John Medlin. Family really comes together. You see the chaplain from Racers for Christ right there. And they're getting information back here. It's not as if those on the starting line don't know what's going on there. There's plenty of communication going back and forth, and certainly not any more crowd is needed up at the accident site. Jimmy Crock talking to uh, Robert Hyde, and Kenny Bernstein is okay. They're going to pull that car back. Kenny Bernstein, the other car in that incident, and really the victim of whatever happened on John Force's car. Well, Mike, while we wait for further word, let's go back and see what we can find out about this run. Watch the car on the right. Well, and the car on the left, of cross the center line. You see the blocks fly over to the other side. I, I do, I'm not positive that possibly something in the timing lights could have went over there, could have cut a tire on John's car. We, I mean, obviously, that's just speculation, but you did see the pieces come over there. So, I mean, Kenny Burns, he was disqualified from the run when he hit those blocks, giving the win to John. But then, uh, obviously, these, the problem set in thereafter. Let's take another look at it. Uh, Kenny, you know, Kenny had the whole shot off of the starting line, had a good run, but look at the thing start moving around. It drifts over. Once you get out of the groove here, it's a wild ride. It's really hard, a handful here at the Texas Motorplex on the other end in that concrete. Uh, when it starts slip, when you get it out of the groove, it really gets loose and you really got to do some driving. Right there you see the car come over and wow, that's, that's a Looked big like hit. something started to disintegrate in the right rear of John's car. After I didn't see the block is that critically involved in it, but it may have been as you said, Mike. Well, I mean, it could possibly have been pieces that went over there and, and cut the tire. We don't know at, at this point. Let's take another look at it. I mean, John's, you know, got his car pretty much stuck in the groove. Uh, it's not moving around too much on the other end at this point. Kenny's ahead. He can probably see him. I don't. I don't know if Kenny was far enough ahead that we. Uh, he. He probably didn't see him. He wasn't that far ahead. Usually got to be more about a car length out. But then you see the right rear go on the car, and then that. Just just drove the car over into Kenny's lane. And with Kenny Bernstein crossing the center line, John Force, the car stayed in his lane, would come out as the winner of this, but then, of course, the uh, car breaking in half after that disintegration, and uh, John Force, they say, is conscious but has injuries to his lower extremities. So we'll wait until we hear some more definitive and... Uh, accurate information to see exactly how John Force is after this horrifying accident with Kenny Bernstein. Two great masters of the sport slamming together against the wall in Dallas. The parachutes pulled the car apart. It was, I mean, it was already broke, but then when the chutes went out, it separated the car. I thought it was the impact with the wall. So we wait for information in Dallas. And uh, let's say a prayer for both of them.